the prefrontal cortex is this large gray matter area right behind our foreheads, which is so important for delayed gratification, appreci appreciating future consequences of current actions, and also our autobiographical narratives, the stories we tell about our lives. And what happens in addiction is that that prefrontal cortex essentially goes offline and those deeper limbic or emotion brain structures are ruling the day the gremlins take over. Um, so what we need to do is get the prefrontal cortex back online talking to the limbic brain. So we need to activate it. And one of the ways we can activate it is by telling the truth because telling the truth is hard. We're all natural liars. The average adult tells one to two lies per day. Um, and we can wake up our prefrontal cortex by waking up in the morning and saying, you know what, I'm not going to tell a single lie today, not even a little fudge factor exaggerating how long I waited or how late I was or, you know, how much ice cream I ate or whatever it was. I'm going to be totally honest today. And to do that takes concerted effort and I think probably activates that prefrontal cortex. Evidence for that is um, that when the TMS intervention, intervention, so these using a magnet, transcranial magnetic stimulation to enhance uh, the conductivity of circuits in our brain, that's how TMS works. When we use TMS to treat things like nicotine addiction, what we essentially do is put the magnet on the prefrontal cortex and try to stimulate it, and then put the magnet back on the deeper limbic brain structures and try to quiet those down. So getting the appropriate balance between those two areas. Also a very interesting study done by some neuroscience colleagues in Europe, uh, looking at um, a basically a die rolling task where participants were told, okay, we're gonna give you this die and on the screen is gonna come up the winning number. And you tell us how often you got the winning number and every time you get the winning number, you'll make some money. And according to basic you know, statistics of die rolling, uh, that should have been, you know, the average person should have gotten it correct about 50% of the time. But instead, uh, people got it correct 60% of the time, which tells us, not surprisingly, that people tend to lie. Because um, unlike a ca casino, you could lie in this case because no one, no one else was, uh, you know, correcting you if you didn't, if you weren't truthful about the numbers that came on the screen. So then what they did was they applied a sort of a deep brain stimulation type of magnet to um, upregulate the prefrontal cortex. And then they had them do it again. And what they found is they lied less. So after that prefrontal cortex stimulation, lying went down, which, which, we, can inf which we, can, and we can infer from that, that if stimulating the prefrontal cortex makes people tell the truth, it's possible that telling the truth stimulates the prefrontal cortex. So I, I do think it's a really great way um, to stimulate the prefrontal cortex, uh, and um, also make people aware and accountable of what they're doing. But what happens with addiction is we start telling a story about our lives that's not true. And once we do that, we believe it ourselves, and then we don't have access to the true information. But when we're telling truthful autobiographical narratives, uh, that means we're telling truthful stories, and then we have access to more information, which is important because the stories we tell about our lives are not just a way to organize the past. They actually become roadmaps for the future. So how people tell their stories has a big impact on how they interact going forward in their environment. It's so interesting that I think it's the work of that guy, Christian Ruff, um, he's yes. in Switzerland or something. Yeah. The, you know, this idea that stimulating the prefrontal cortex can increase truth telling, um, but also the other way around that we increase truth telling, we can stimulate the prefrontal cortex. Um, yeah, it becomes right. a sort of self perpetuating cycle. And it makes me think, oh God, like, are they going to be using TMS in courthouses <laughs> now and stuff? You know? <laughs> if relapses are viewed as failures, then what we all get when we fail is embarrassment, shame, humiliation. And if like, you know, we know from the research that traumatized individuals have a higher rate of relapse, it takes longer for them to get stably sober. Um, and even when they're stably sober, they're at higher risk for later relapse. So, so what they don't need is to feel a sense of fail, failure and shame. Also, shame prevents new learning because shame takes us into more primitive areas of the brain. But just think, you know, dogs feel shame. 
You know, you give your dog the evil eye and the dog kind of hangs its head. Um, right. So it's, I mean, horses, horse people have told me that horses display shame. So it's, it's a very primitive response and it interferes with learning anything new. Yeah. What we want when somebody relapses is we want them to learn from it. Right? That's what we teach children. You make a mistake, you acknowledge it, and you learn from it. And, and so I wanted a technique or an approach that helped addicts to see their relapses as a learning opportunity. And so, and it really fits with, with 12 step models to this idea of um, spiritual opportunities. So I started saying to people, oh, you relapsed. What a wonderful opportunity. And I found that when I did that, they got curious instead of going into shame. Okay. And so, which is exactly where we want people. And if there's increased activity in the prefrontal cortex, it's easier to know the truth. Because if my prefrontal cortex is offline, I may not even know the truth. Exactly, yeah. Right? Because I can't see the big picture. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating. So, um, uh, and here's the other challenge when it comes to addiction. With addiction, um, well, f first of all, the, we get this, this information about the prefrontal cortex shutting down. We get that from brain science showing that traumatic responses are associated with um, inhibition of the prefrontal cortex. And so for a traumatized addict, that means that the prefrontal cortex may be shut down to begin with. Um, then substances further impair the prefrontal cortex, <laughs> right? right? Uh, so it's kind of a vicious circle. And then the less able to use the prefrontal cortex, the more vulnerable people are to relapse. So I always start, if I have an active um, alcoholic or addict, I always start by getting them to be curious. I don't start by getting them to try to stop using. I start by getting them curious because they've got, there's no way to get sober if your prefrontal cortex doesn't work. Mm -hmm. right. I've just, I've just seen the link, you know, curiosity more than likely stimulates the prefrontal cortex and that may be why it opens up so many possibilities, you know? Right. And that curiosity is a non-threatening way to increase activity in the prefrontal cortex because most people are not threatened by the idea of being curious. 